Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna go over the whole bookkeeping process using the bank feeds section. Now, it's a continuation of another video which I did on bank feeds where we had gone through all the features that are available in this uh, bank feed section, bank transaction section. Um, so do watch that video before watching this one just so you're clear on how to use this section. And if you like the content, do subscribe to the channel. Um, that's it. So let's get started. It's going to be a fairly long video. Okay, so we're going to go over all the transactions. I'm going to go walk you through all the transactions that are possible using the bank feed section. We're going to go over all the incoming cash transaction, all the outgoing cash transaction. So let's go through these transactions one by one. Okay, so first, when you go to bank transactions, pick the right bank account that you want to work on. Instead of all transactions, I'm just going to go into money in transactions. So I can walk you through uh, walk you through the um, incoming cash transactions. Okay, so first one I want to do is this. So if you're a cash basis business, you don't have to worry about matching the transactions to anything. You are simply going to click on categorize and anything that comes in, anything uh, that your client pays you, it's income. So we can simply pick a client, which is XYZ here. XYZ customer is paying and I'm going to call it my income. So services, services income. That's how easy it is for, uh, for uh, to do cash basis accounting. And I'm going to add it. That's first one. Now, next type of transaction is if you are uh, if you are doing accounting on a cruel basis and you have invoices that exist for this particular customer who is paying you now. So let's go to this transaction that is here from ABC Company. So now ABC Company is my client who is paying me, but I have multiple invoices for this client. So QuickBooks doesn't know which invoice exactly this customer is paying me for. So I would just click on this transaction. So this is how the transaction appears. I'm going to click on the transaction and see which two invoices is trying to match it to because it says two matches found. I have to pick the correct one. So I'll click, click on the correct one. I know this is the correct one and click on match. Now it closes your invoice this way. I receive the pay, it receives the payment against the invoice that you have in system. Okay, that's the second type of transaction. Now, third one, another type of transaction is when you receive a payment, but there are multiple invoices that this payment should be applied to. So a perfect example would be this one. Okay, now my client is paying me 40 to 50 and it applies to two invoices, but I cannot receive this payment through bank feeds like this. What I need to do is I need to go to that client. Click on receive payment, payment, and pick the right invoices this payment should be applied to. Okay, it's this and this. And the date of payment, date of payment is 7-13. Okay, how did this customer pay? Let's say it's a wire transfer. I don't have the wire transfer here, so ACH. Let's say it's ACH. Uh, which account is the payment going to? Chase 4951, 4250, save and close. Now, why did I do it this way? I did it this way because if you try to match it through bank uh, bank transaction, uh, bank feed section, it ma it creates two payments, two separate payments actually, one for each of the invoices you're trying to close. So instead, you have to go to the client section, customer section, pick the right invoices, receive the payment through customer section, and then come back here and then match the payment. Now you can match the payment. Okay, done. Now, next type of transaction you have for incoming cash, it could be a transfer from another uh, another one of your bank accounts, which I have uh, right here. So now it's a transfer from one, two, three, four. Now, what is this? What is my file doing? My file is actually not trying to find a transfer, instead trying to match it to an open invoice. We don't want that. So if your file transfers it, um, matches it correctly to the transfer or pairs it to the transfer, perfect, accept it. If it doesn't, then click on record as transfer. And I'm going to pick the right bank account that the money came from. So Chase checking one, two, three, four. That's where my money came from. I'm going to add it. 
So this is how you would record a transfer. Now, another type of incoming cash could be a vendor credit. So I bought some stuff, stuff from Staples. Now I returned it. I need to record the credit that I got from Staples. Staples gave me money back. So the vendor credits are supposed to be recorded exactly the opposite way that the expense was recorded. So if Staples was recorded in office supplies expense, that's the account I'm going to use. That's the vendor I'm going to use when I get the money back from that vendor. So Staples is going to be vendor and office supplies is going to be my expense. And I could put a note here, a refund from Staples. Add. Okay. Now, next type of transaction could be um, money being put in by the owner of the business. So here, I'm actually putting money in. I'm putting 7,500 in my business. So I can say Pucha Lumba, which is set up as a vendor. And account is going to be owner's contributions. So add. Okay. Next type of money you could receive from bank is an interest. Interest that bank is giving you. So right here is the interest. So my bank account is Chase. My bank is Chase. So Chase Bank. It's paying me interest. It's not interest expense. It's interest earned. This is how you would record that. So add. So another type of transaction could be advanced from line of credit. Now advanced from line of credit is going to be recorded only as a transfer. Because it's, it's simply a transfer from my line of credit to my business bank account. So my line of credit account is this. Uh, I did do a detailed video on this, how to like have all the accounting uh, around line of credit. I'm going to put a link in the description. So if you want more details on how to account for line of credit, then you can you can watch that video. Chase line of credit, add. Okay, this is how we deal with all the incoming transactions. Now let's talk about the outgoing, right? So this was the money in. Now we're going to talk about all the outgoing ones all transactions. These are all the outgoing transactions. Okay, so let's go over the outgoing transactions now. So we're going to do that one by one. The very first one is going to be a payment to a vendor. Here. Again, for cash basis uh, accounting, it's very easy. You just put the name of the vendor. For me, it's test vendor. Oops, it's test vendor. And I'm paying them for my website expense. So I don't have the account. Let's create that right now. So new account and So I'm paying them for my website expense. Super easy if it's cash versus accounting. You just put the vendor name, put the expense, add. Okay, next comes a little bit more um, complex one, which is a payment to a vendor who has multiple bills in our system. So the vendor name is XYZ. So, so just like we did with the customer's uh, customer payment, when customer paid for multiple invoices, we had to go to customer center and, uh, um, and receive the payment there. We're gonna do the same thing here too. We gotta to go to vendor center, expenses, vendors. We go to this vendor, XYZ. Okay, now we're gonna click on drop down next to one of the bills and click on mark as paid. And the account is 4951. And the date of payment is 710. And our reference number is just the ACH payment. And we're gonna pick both the bills that are being paid with that one payment, $350. Save and close. Now we go back to our bank transactions. And now match the payment, $350. Again, same issue, just like customers. If we, just, if we make a payment here, uh, if we match the payment to two invoices here, multiple invoices, QuickBooks creates multiple payments for those. So that $350 payment was going to be broken down into like $100 payment and $250. So when we reconcile the bank account at that point, it does not make sense. That's why we had to do this. So click on match then. Okay, next type of transaction. Next type of transaction is a transfer to another account. 
Now this one, this is what I was talking about. The other, when we were doing the transfer in, it did not really match the transfer to the other side, but this time it is, um, which is great. So this is a um, comparatively a new feature that QuickBooks has introduced, uh, where it can pair the, tra if your both accounts are synced with QuickBooks, which mine, mine are actually here, and you're transferring money from one account to another, it tries to find the same transaction on the other end. And once you record it on one side, it makes it disappear from the other side too, which is great actually. Um, so let's do that. But let's just make sure it's pairing it to the right one because sometimes people do have multiple transfers for the same amount. Okay, seven five, this is the transaction transfer from this, yes. Okay, the memo is incorrect actually, uh, but I know this one is correct payment, so added. Okay, so that's how you would match uh, a pair or transaction of transfer. Okay, next type of transaction, outgoing transaction could be a check, which here we have, check 794. Now, before you record checks, there is one setting you should turn on by clicking on this gear icon, click on check number, and click on... Oh, it's right here, editable date field. Okay, I always like having the date field here because if I wrote the check, let's say on 7-1, if I wrote the check on 7-1 and it was cashed on 7-8, I still want the exact date that I wrote the check on to be here in my QuickBooks. So the check was written to uh, BNY Insurance, BNY for insurance expense, which is right here. And that's it, and we will record it now. So that's how you will record a check. Okay, just like we discussed the owner's contribution, uh, there's another outgoing transaction could be, you know, owner taking the money out of business, which is right here. So I took $10,000 out of my business, and we'll call it owner's draw, okay? And that's how you record it, owner's draw. It's a drawing that I'm making against my contributions in the business, add. Okay, next type of transaction is uh, a loan payment. So we could be making a loan payment. In this case, when you have a loan payment, there are two ways to enter it. One, you could record the interest uh, using a journal entry. And when you make a payment to the loan, you can simply select that, um, that loan account here, like Wells Fargo loan. But let me show you a different way of doing it too. Um, when you have to if you have to split the payment into two, if you don't want to record the interest using a journal entry, then this is a shortcut to do it. Uh, we are making the payment to Wells Fargo and we are making a payment actually for the loan. Let's say out of six, um, 6,500, 6,000 was the loan payment, principal payment. And then we had $500 worth of interest as well. Interest portion is $500. So this is how you would record it. Okay. Uh, this now next one is payroll. Payroll gets a li little complicated. Um, so let's go through it one by one. ADP fees. This is a uh, easy part. ADP. So processing fee. Let's see. We have that or not? We don't. Okay. We're gonna create that account. Payroll processing fee. It's an expense account. Uh, so recorded. Uh, next one, we do the uh, ADP payroll. Now, when, when you process the payroll, only the net amount is taken out by ADP in one transaction. So you need to look at your payroll report and see how much the gross payroll was. So this is what you would do. And now this is the simplified method. There are a lot of other factors that can involve like disability insurance, um, if you're making uh, withholdings for that, and then there is 401k, could be um, then could be health insurance payments or something. So it get, does get more complicated, but this is like a really simplified version of it. So you'll click on split. You will look at the salary, gross wages uh, per your report. Again, we have to create all these accounts, uh, payroll expense, and we have salaries. Okay, save and close. So salaries and then salaries are, let's say nine, $9,000, okay? And then your company is gonna incur some payroll tax expense too. 
Uh, then we're going to have payroll taxes, which is the employer portion of tax. I'll keep it all as payroll. Save and close. Okay. And then we have, let's say, $1,000. And then... payroll taxes payable. So the tax that we are paying as a company and tax that we are taking out from employees paycheck, all that tax is payable uh, to the taxing authorities. So we're going to show it as payroll taxes payable of $3,400. Now this is creating a liability actually in your, uh, in your QuickBooks. So watch we're gonna, what we're going to do next. So we accepted that transaction. Now this one, when ADP takes out money for taxes, it's actually going to go against the payroll tax payable. This is the amount in total that we took out from employees paycheck plus what our company is paying in taxes as well. So this goes against payroll taxes payable and add. And this is how you enter all the transactions, basically do all the bookkeeping uh, through bank feeds. Okay, so once we are done with entering all the transactions through bank feeds, um, Really, really, really important part is to reconcile the bank account to make sure that we did not duplicate anything and we did not miss any transaction. So for that, we're going to click on gear icon and click on reconcile. And before you start reconciling, you, you have to make sure you have your bank statement ready. So we're going to go to the bank account that we're looking for. Okay, so my bank account balance is... Uh, I am using today's day as reconciliation date because I'm just using this as an example. So start reconciling. Okay. Now, since I entered everything through bank feeds, uh, QuickBooks actually by default checks off all these transactions. Uh, and it's great that my difference is zero. Basically, I... I all my transactions are here and nothing is being duplicated. So that's great. If you get zero, you can click on finish now. If you do not, do not click on finish now. And if you have to leave it in the middle, that's okay. Uh, you'll just click on the drop down and click on save for later. Not every time it's going to go to zero. Again, this is a great place where you see all the discrepancies, you know. Uh, and sometimes for the differences, you might have to like uncheck it and go through your bank statement one by one, look at all the deposit transactions one by one and check them off here. Look at all the payment transactions one by one and check them off here. And then when you get to zero, then finish now. Again, if you are missing transactions at that point, enter those transactions manually you can by clicking on new. And if it's expense transaction, then expense. Uh, if it's a payment towards an invoice, you'll do that, whatever type of transactions they are. And once, once the difference comes to zero, uh, then you click on finish now. So let's do finish now done. Another thing uh, you should do is you should go to history by account and click on attach. And this you can browse actually your computer for the for your bank statement and you can attach it here. So I'm going to do that. Just going to pick any statement. And attach it here. Okay, so that's it. That's how you do the bookkeeping using bank feeds. Thank you and happy accounting.